Hi there, welcome to Flonagan Dreams. These are my top 10 cool tone nude lipsticks. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. This is a video series that I started at the start of the year to share with you my favorite cool tone products in different categories. I've already covered blush, bronzer, highlighter, and this time around, I thought we could focus on lips. I'm going to be doing several sort of lip categories. And I think by the end of the year, I might be able to do another one about blush, but we'll see how it goes. I'm just tackling one category every single month. And today we're doing bullet lipsticks, both high end and drugstore that are cool toned. Before we get into the video, it may be good to know who I am and what I like doing on this channel. My name is Maika. I live in the Netherlands. I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone and this greatly influences how I feel about makeup. I have been reviewing makeup for more than a decade. I love trying out eyeshadow palettes, Essence and Catrice, and getting the use out of my makeup. So if that's something you're looking for as well, then I hope you'd like to consider sticking around. So as I said in the intro, this is my top 10 favorite cool tone nude lipsticks. I definitely want to do a colorful version of this as well, but I figured we could do nudes first because... I think that's what a lot of people are always looking for. And it can be difficult in the cool toned like realm to find good nude lipsticks, I find, because a lot of them tend to pull quite warm toned, like it's always like a beige or it's got brown to it. And when I think of a cool toned nude, I'm thinking of like mauvey purples and having more of a plummy undertone, perhaps a bit of pink. Um, so some of these, you know, I love. Um, because I have raved about these a lot in the past. So there's a, a complete mix here of both high-end and also more drugstore options. Some of these I've raved about a lot before because they are some of my absolute favorites and I will be swatching all of them on my lips for you as well. That's why I'm coming to you from the office where I do a lot of my like makeup-y uh, videos so that I can show you everything on my lips as well and I'll swatch everything on the back of my hand. Um, so that you can get the full lowdown of all 10 of these shades. Before we get to the top 10, I want to share two honorable mentions because I don't feel these lipsticks are cool tones if you just judge it, judge them by themselves. But I feel they are good options if you do have a cool or undertone and you're looking for a nude. And they are by, both by Lisa Eldridge. So Lisa Eldridge's True Velvet line and also her Luxuriously Lucens and the Insanely Saturated, because there are three different formulas. None of them have really good cool tones in. There's like one cool tone pink in the Luxuriously Lucens, but I don't consider that to be a nude because it's more like a Barbie color. Um, but I feel that very, like, as I mentioned, in the nude category, a lot of brands make everything very warm toned, but because Lisa Eldridge lipsticks have a bunch of different undertones in them so they can work on a lot of different skin tones, I feel that even if, you do prefer cooler tones, you could still make something like this work. Um, the one I'm still wearing a little bit today, because this is the lipstick I was wearing all day today. I just had lunch. Um, but it's uh, Lisa Eldridge's Velvet Muse. So here is what that lipstick looks like. If mine looks absolutely gross, that's because I've used it so much. Like, this is how much I have left. It is one of my favorite shades in the range. And um, here is what it looks like if I swatch it. As you can see, it's like a warmer, rosy tone on the back of my hand. If you want to check shades uh, like the way they might look on your lips, then you actually need to swatch it on your fingertip in case you didn't know. But I'm going to be swatching it on my lips for you anyway. So let me reapply this so you can see what it actually looks like. So this is a full on swatch of the Lisa Eldridge Velvet Muse lipstick. And I think this is really, really stunning. I mean, it's one of my favorites for a reason. It works really well. I'm wearing quite a warm, rosy eye look today, but a pretty neutral blush. And I feel this has enough color for it to actually have enough contrast. I find that if nudes get too light because I am so pale, it just makes me look a little bit dead. And as you can see, my hair color is a little bit more warmer tone. I'm like a warm blonde, you could say. Um, and then I feel that I need some warmth somewhere in my look to tie everything together. Like if I wear only cool tones, it can look a little flat. Um, so I always mix cool and warm, you could say. So I feel that this one went really well with the eye look I'm wearing today. It's still quite neutral, but a little bit more warm toned with this like peachy, rosy gold. I'm really enjoying it. It's a, a combination of three of the little 
Huda Beauty palettes that I have. So yeah, that's the first Lisa Eldritch one that is a honorable mention. But one of the reasons why I'm not wearing Velvet Muse as often anymore is because later on we got Velvet Sorcery. And this is essentially like a darker, more brown toned version of Velvet Muse. But as you'll see, if I swatch it next to it, it's also a little bit more plum. So even though it looks very dark, Sorcery, Velvet Sorcery is now one of my favorites from the entire Lisa Eldridge line, because as far as a cool tone nude goes, especially if you have like not that many, like not that pigmented lips as I do, you can very easily make it work by wearing it as a stain and you can still wear the color, but I like wearing it full on and that's how I will be swatching it for you. And here is what Velvet Sorcery looks like on me. As you can see, it goes really well with my coloring. It has a little bit of warmth, but nothing too much, so it can still be flattering as well. If people do have warm undertones, you can still get away with it, but it's definitely cooler toned even than Muses, which you can also see in the swatch. It's deeper, and it's got a lot more plum running through it compared to uh, Velvet Muse, which is more of a rosy tone you could say and it has a little bit of a hint of terracotta but not too much um but i love this shade on me i think it goes really well it adds a little bit more intensity to the look as well which i tend to prefer because i have naturally quite pigmented lips so if something is too light it doesn't always look right on me let me move on to the actual top 10. and next we have our actual top 10. as i said the lisa eldridge lipstick range doesn't have a really good cool tone nude but if you do have a cool undertone and you were looking for some options of what you might want to try those would be the two i would recommend you look into because those i feel work the best if you do have a cool complexion um, but there are plenty of cool tone neutrals around. You don't need to go through Lisa Eldridge, but I know so many of you know I have many Lisa Eldridge lipsticks, so I knew I would get the question, which is why I decided to include those. Um, the first one I want to show you is also one of the most expensive ones I have, and it's this mini of the Divine Rose lipstick by Pat McGrath. This is a stunning formula. It's a really pretty sort of like dusty rose shade, but it's got that hint of lilac running through it, which is why I like it. And I have the matching lip liner for this as well. So here's what the shade looks like. It's very rich, very creamy. And you can see, again, it's not the most cool toned option I have for you here. There are definitely going to be cooler toned options, but this one I feel is really pretty as well if you have that cooler undertone. And here is what the Pat McGrath in Divine Rose looks like. I feel it almost looks cooler toned on my lips than it does in a swatch. In a swatch, I feel it has a little bit more warmth to it almost, but it definitely has a hint of blue. And I feel that hint of blue is coming through. But compared to the other options we've just looked at, it looks very, very peachy. Pat McGrath loves her peachy tones. So if that's the vibe you're going for, like a cooler toned peach, then I think this can be nice. I tend to wear this only in combination with the lip liner because I feel the lip liner adds a little bit more dimension to my lips. I find that this is veering towards it being a little flat for my liking. I'm not saying that I don't love that look. If you love that look, go for it. But for my personal preferences, I like something a little bit more intense. Another, but we'll get the bougie options out of the way first, I think. Uh, another more expensive option is this one from Victoria Beckham. This is in the shade Jump, and this is the Posh Lipstick. And this is quite possibly one of the best purple-leaning mauves. It is a cream formula, so that has to be your cup of tea. It's not a matte. I really am just swatching these for shade and not necessarily for finish. Um, but there is a range here of creams and mattes. And compared to the Pat McGrath especially, it looks straight up purple. <laughs> um, because the uh, Pat McGrath next to it pulls very peach, I feel. But this is definitely a really pretty option. And it comes in this really slim bullet because it's so creamy that it might break off. So don't twist these up too far if you have any because they are going to break if you were to twist them up all the way when you apply them. And here we have what the Victoria Beckham Posh lipsticks look like 
in the shade Jump. Now for full transparency here, I do want to point out that Victoria Beckham Beauty sent this to me in PR. They saw one of my posts over on the blog and decided to send me a package, which I was super grateful for. And this was one of the items that I was allowed to pick out for that package. And I really love this. This is a really nice formula. And here you can see like the way it looks different from the Pat McGrath that it just does a bit more for me because it has a plummy undertone. Maybe if you don't have a super cool undertone, this will not work for you because it's going to look ashy and washed out. But I feel on me, it really complements my lip color and it goes with my skin tone really well. So it is definitely a kind of shade that I feel I can pull off and I can wear it with almost anything that actually goes for all of the lipsticks I'm showing you here today. I feel that these are great neutral options that you can whack on with any eye look, whether it's a very warm toned eye or a more cool tone leaning eye, I feel you can just get away with um, whatever it is you're wearing. Expensive option number three is this guy from Gucci. This is from their matte range and this is the uh, what's it called again? Peggy Taupe? Peggy Taupe shade, which isn't taupe at all. It's more of a mauve shade. They do this in another formula as well, and I feel that pool's pretty brown, and it's more like sheer and creamy looking, but this is my favorite of the two mattes I have from Gucci because it is such a good mauve tone for sure. So here we have the Gucci swatch. I forgot to swatch it on the back of my hand before I put it on. But here you can see again, this has a bit more pink to it. So I definitely feel that within my cool toned options, there are options depending on what you might like. If you want something more plummy, go for the Victoria Beckham. If you want something that's a little bit more peachy leaning, then go for the Pat McGrath. But if you want a true pink, go Gucci. Because I think this is a really, really stunning shade. It is... A little floral heavy though so if you don't like floral scents you may not like this formula because it does have a strong perfumey smell i do feel now that i have had my gucci lipsticks for a while that the scent starts to disappear really clearly so i don't feel they tend to like keep smelling as strong as they first come out of the box but if you don't like scents then this may be something to stay away from especially on lipsticks it's very close to your nose so you're gonna smell this. It does disappear, it doesn't linger around all day, um, but it's like a floral bouquet, which I don't feel that's a really good scent for lipstick, you could say. And finally, in the more luxuriously section, I have this Charlotte Tilbury number. This is very Victoria, which I think compared to everything else I've swatched so far, is going to look very brown. But I feel that out of the entire Charlotte Tilbury range, I know everybody goes by for pillow talk, but if I want to go for that beigey sort of nude vibe, I tend to go for Very Victoria because I feel this is one of the more flattering shades that exists in the Charlotte Tilbury line for my complexion. So let me throw it on. And here we have Ver Very Victoria. I feel this shade is like the perfect nude for me. It has a little bit of that mauve tone, but not too much. It definitely is a little bit more beige leaning. I'm going to be very honest with you. It is lighter than I normally go for, but on me, I feel that it has enough oomph for it to go with my complexion. It plays really well with this eye look I've got going on. It plays well with my hair color. It goes well with my natural lip color. It goes well with my skin tone. It has a lot going for it, which is why it's been one of my favorite nudes in like for a very long time. I've got some other favorites coming up in a second, um, but these as well, like the Lisa Eldridge bits I showed you at the start, as well as this one has been a long-standing favorite in my makeup collection. I used to own Pillow Talk and I decluttered it to keep this one around as my perfect nude option from Charlotte Tilbury instead. I said that the Charlotte Tilbury one was the last one, but it completely, my numbers are thrown off in my head because of the two extra Lisa Eldridge bits. But I have one more high-end lipstick, which is this MAC one. This is a satin lipstick in the shade Twig. Now, MAC just recently redid their entire lipstick range, so I don't know if they still do things like Ma Twig and Brave and Mare, um, because those were some of my favorite neutrals, and when I decluttered Mare, Brave, and Twig because they had expired, I went back to the MAC counter and I told myself, those three shades are so similar, I'm only allowed to keep one. 
And the one I ended up choosing was Twig, because Brave is a bit lighter than this. Mare is a matte, and it's a little bit more mauve-toned. Um, but this has, like, the best of both worlds when it comes to a true nude. It's pink, it's brown, it's beige, but it also has that cooler undertone. I think Twig is one of the best nude lipsticks ever made, and... If this happened to be discontinued, I would be very, very sad because I'm so glad that I did get to pick up like a new version of this so I can still have it in my collection. So this one doesn't look very used, but my original version was very used indeed. And here is what Twig looks like. Like compared to Very Victoria, it's again a lot more plummy than um, what that has to, to offer. And it definitely has a bit more of a rosy tone. And here is what Max Twig looks like on me. I think this is stunning. It's It delivers every time. It has a cooler undertone, as I mentioned, but it has a blend of everything that, like the Lisa Eldridge, it's going to pick up on something that will flatter you no matter what skin tone you are, I feel. Um, it's deep enough for me to wear it as a nude and wear it by itself. It doesn't wash me out. It has a really pretty undertone. And I feel that on me, it pulls quite plum, which is what I enjoy. So Max Twig is a solid favorite for a reason. It has been for years, and I'm really glad I repurchased it. And then we get our drugstore options and a brand that does some really beautiful, cooler toned nude lipsticks. It's Kiko. This is the first one. I've got another one coming up in a second. This is the Unlimited Stilo in shade 22. I think the shade name was just mauve. Um, this is really pretty. I've kept it around in my collection for a while now. This almost has something gray in it. So if you're super cool toned, this is going to be the one because it just has a little bit more. Do you see that? It just has a little bit more of a cooler undertone even compared to everything else I've got going on here. I mean, compared to the Pat McGrath, I mean, this now just looks up like, like a straight up terracotta next to something as cool toned as this. So the drugstore can definitely do some really good drugstore um, cool toned options, I should say. So don't ignore it because the drugstore can definitely deliver. And here's what the Unlimited Stilo in 22 looks like from Kiko Milano. I think this is a beautiful lipstick. It's so rich and creamy, really easy to use. It's super cool tone though. This is the only one, the first one, I, one I'm putting on where I'm like, mm, this doesn't really go with the eye look I'm wearing today because it's so far away removed from the warmer rosy tones I have on my eyes because this, that gray tone, this really nice grayish purple really comes through and I think this is one of the best ones I've ever found for a cooler toned lipstick option. The only problem is that I don't know whether they still do this um, because Kiko was forced to reformulate a lot of their uh, products in the past two years because of some new EU regulations. So some of the older line is still available through their website. So definitely check that out if you haven't yet, because um, sometimes it may be difficult to track down certain shades from products because I have found that with the for reformulation, they also altered some of the shades a little bit. So whether you can still get this exact shade, I I don't want to bet my money on it. And we're just keeping the Kiko tray rolling because the Velvet Passion Lipsticks is another one of my favorites. This is a really good, stunning formula. This particular line has a lot of dupes in shade-wise for the Lisa Eldridge lipstick range. So I did a couple of videos in the past where I've done some comparisons, um, namely my Kiko review. I tried every single uh, formula that they have in their line to see what what it was all about. And I found uh, a couple of dupes for sure for some Lisa Eldridge lipsticks. But this is the shade Mauve. Let me f look up the shade number, 315. And this one, it, the cap doesn't always stay on in my bag, so that's why there are scratches on this lipstick. Um, but this is another really, really good cooler tone, mauve pink. Like, again, the previous one I swatched that looked very gray and plum on my lips looks brown compared to this because it is a little bit lighter and it's definitely more pink than some of the other options we've chatted about so far. So 
So this is like borderline where it gets too pink for it to be a nude, I feel, but it's definitely nude enough because of that purple that it has running through it. It is a little bit light for my liking, which is why I don't often wear it. However, I now have lip liner, so I know I can make this work uh, a little bit more, but I tend to wear this mainly in like, you know, the spring or like these transitional seasons where I tend to wear more like pastel -y things on my eyes as well. And then this lipstick works really well because it's never going to overpower anything, I feel. So, so far, I actually think the drugstore may have the better cooler toned options than the uh, more high-end things have. The high-end high things all have something warm. They all have something warm to them or could be warm, depending on what your skin tone is like. Um, let me move on to the next shade. Next up is a Peri Para lipstick. This is the Fallen Acre Mood lipstick in shade 12. Uh, and this is a cooler tone brown. Um, because I wanted to not only have like pinky tones or like purpley things, I also wanted to include my favorite cooler tone brown shade. I don't think you can see that if I swatch it there. Let me put it here so you can see. So this is definitely like brown brown, like compared to these pinks, it looks very off. Looks a bit orange almost, but I feel I can get a little bit more of that purpley gray sort of undertone coming through with my natural lip color. So let me show it to you on. So this is one of those lipsticks where I feel that looks can be misleading because here in the swatch, it looks super brown and almost yellow, but on my lips, I don't see that yellow undertone at all. And this is why swatches don't always tell the whole story. This has been my spiel from the start. I've, I've explained this many times before. If you only ever rely on swatches to make decisions on what makeup looks right on you, you could miss out on some gems because swatches only tell half the story. It swatches beautifully. It's a very rich, creamy formula. But on my lips, I get a cooler tone brown with a purple undertone. And I think this is stunning, and this is the only lipstick like it that I have in my collection. So if Velvet Teddy were a cool toned lipstick, I feel we would get this, and it's such a good one for my complexion. So this is one I really love. I really feel it gives me that like sepia look. It goes so well with my hair color um, to have this like cooler tone brown but then it really ties in together very nicely with the rest of my look as well. So this is a stunning one that I truly adore. And next up is a discovery I found in 2023. This is Wicon. This is an Italian brand. I found them in Florence. They are originally from Naples, I believe. And they had this lipstick line, the Matte Icon. This is shade Z7 Mauve. And it's so pretty. I have the matching lip liner because I just liked it that much. So I'm going to swatch it down here. This is a very rich, creamy texture. I really, really enjoy this one. And it's such a stunning lipstick for every day. And again, it's different from the others where it's got plum and it's got pink and it's got that really nice blend. And with the lip liner, I can make it look very sharp. And if I want to go like full glam, this is the lipstick I reach for. And here is what the Wicon looks like. I think this is pretty. This is really, really stunning. And as I just mentioned, my prediction is right because the drugstore options here are by far, far more cool tone than the higher end ones. So if you want a good, uh, you want a good cool tone lipstick, look at the drugstore because they are absolutely killing it. Look at how pretty this lipstick is. It's absolutely gorgeous. I believe you can buy Wicon online if you don't have access to the brand, because I think it's only sold in Italy, which is a bit of a shame, but I really, really adore this shade. It's so stunning on, and yeah, I should wear this more often again. <laughs> this is a good reminder that I just need to reach for these lipstick a bit more often. I was testing out so many Essence and Catrice lipsticks in the past two months that I haven't really reached into my lipstick collection ever since I decluttered it. So now I'm like really having this moment where I'm rediscovering lipsticks and I'm loving it. And finally, last but not least, the Catrice Scandalous Matte Lipstick in the shade Good Intentions. This is 060. So this is from the most recent lipstick line that Catrice came out with 
in this bullet style format. Chances are that by the summertime they're gonna come out with a new one, because you never know with Catrice, but they do some really pretty things, and this is such a stunning lighter pinky mauve tone. I mean, she's stunning. So this is a really pretty lipstick. I love the formula of these. They are matte, but very thin and creamy still, so they still nourish your lips without drying them out, because I've been swatching 12 different lipsticks, and my lips are so dry right now, but I know that putting this one on is going to make everything feel better. And here is the Catrice. Again, very light um, and very cool toned. It's most similar, I feel, to the Kiko Milano than any anything else I've tried. So the 315 in the Velvet Passion range from Kiko. That has a similar light vibe, I feel. This is a little less light. I feel the Kiko one is a little bit brighter, has a bit more white to it than this one does. But I feel it's very pretty. Again, it has a cool undertone. This almost looks lavender on my lips, and I am here for it. So the Catrice Scandalous Matte is the final one that I wanted to show you. And here are the swatches close up from all of these different lipsticks for sure. So here we have the two Lisa Eldridge ones, and we have Pat McGrath. I think then we did Gucci. No, this was, um, this was Victoria Beckham. Then we had Gucci. Um, then we had uh, Very Victoria, Twig, um, do I remember? Oh, Kiko Milano, Kiko Milano, um, Peri Para, and then we have the Wicon and the Catrice. So, some stunning lipsticks. I really like having these in my collection. This is my comfort zone when it comes to any lipstick shade. If I just want to throw on something that makes me feel pretty, I reach for a mauve tone pink, you could say. So any of these I can throw on and it will complete my look, no matter the look I'm wearing. And I'm, I really need to go back to some of these now that I've swatched them all out on my lips again. So thank you so very much for joining me here today. Thumbs up the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more by me. I would love to know what your favorite cool toned lipstick is, so let me know that in a comment down below. And for now, I would like to thank you very much for being here today. Um, thank you for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I hope you'd like to stay tuned for more, and then I hope to see you in my next one. Bye-bye.